Good morning, my darlings. Welcome to a new vlog. It's half past six in the morning, and it's going to be a rather glorious day. And the best thing is, this view is just going to get better and better and better over the next few weeks. This field will come into bloom. The ornamental pear trees will come into bloom. And I don't know if you can see, but there is a mist rolling over the hills in the distance. I just said to Charlie it would be amazing to send the drone up this morning. But I can't be bothered. <laughs> This looks like a lot of things to consume, but for some reason this morning I decided to make my morning smoothie before going into the gym. Um, and don't worry, I'm not going to drink it until after my workout. And then there's tomorrow's smoothie ready to go. I've got into the habit of using the empty River Cottage kefir bottles for my day two smoothie. You will have just seen I popped in a banana, peanut butter, some of my Wild Nutrition Vegan Protein Superfood Blend. Um, to be honest, I'm not so bothered about this being additional protein because I've been learning how you really don't need like extra protein, but this has got loads and loads of really good things in there, adaptogenic mushrooms, super greens, and it's got loads of superpowers in there. Superpowers? Super ingredients. <laughs> um, yeah, so I really love boosting my morning smoothie with that. Um, berries, frozen berries, a handful of oats. What else do I put in there? Kefir, water, yeah, you just saw everything that went in there in that little time lapse. I wanted to share with you something new from Wild Nutrition. I still take my daily essentials every day. These are the um, very convenient packs. I keep my box in here. There it is. Um, yeah, I keep this box next to the coffee machine because every morning while I'm doing my morning coffee, I come in here, I grab my sachet of daily essentials, and I also grab my Naked Biotics, my little bacteria shot. I think today will be the last shot that I'll get out of this bottle, but I do have one more ready to go. Um, yeah, I take these every single day, my multivitamin, my vitamin D and my omegas, but I know that some people don't love taking tablets or a lot of people choose to only take vitamin D if you're not taking any supplements, the one that you can most probably do with, that most of us are deficient in and struggle to get from our food, is vitamin D. Of course, um, this is not an ad by the way, but I do have a long-term partnership with Wild Nutrition. These are the Wild Nutrition Food Grown Vitamin D Gummies, so they taste absolutely delicious, and yet you can get your daily requirement of vitamin D from these gummies. You take three gummies in the mornings and it's just a really great way of getting your vitamin D in a super high quality form. It's vitamin D3. Wow, this is interesting. Our food grown vitamin D is scientifically shown to be 100% more effectively absorbed and kinder to your digestive system than non-food grown or regular vitamin D. That is why I absolutely love well nutrition and I'm never interested in taking another supplement brand because I just know that these products are good for my body. So yeah, I'm going to take my shot of um, live fermented bacteria from Naked Biotics and my coffee and then I'm going to get into the gym. Morning! Hello again, darling. 
darlings. So I'm freshly out of the shower after my workout and it is going to be such a glorious day today. I'm going to hopefully get out into the greenhouse and I'm going to try and film a few more gardening TikToks. That is the plan for today. I'm going to try and save my email admin for tomorrow because I think it's going to be rainy tomorrow so I'd rather do all of my fun outside bits today but um, I am going to do a little bit of fake tanning. I've got a new brand new bottle of the Saint-Tropez Luxe Whipped Creme Mousse. This is not my darkest tan, I do opt for something else if I want to go really bronzed but for something that's like quite natural Actually, I'd say very natural and good for a continual tan. This is probably my favourite. It's also got skincare in there. It's got niacinamide, hyaluronic acid, echinacea and vitamin E. They call it, they call it a superior tan with high performing natural skincare. And I love it. It does give my skin a really nice glow. And I've got wild swimming later in the week. And um, I always like to have a little bit of a glow when I've got wild swimming coming up few new beauty products I just tried in the shower, which I think is a really good product post-workout, the Paula's Choice 2% BHA Smoothing Spot Exfoliant. Not gonna lie, I don't wanna flash you too much. Okay, <laughs> they're really not that bad, but I'm starting sometimes when I am doing a few more workout. Oh my goodness me, I'm gonna try really hard <laughs> not to flash you. Sometimes when I do a lot of workouts, I do get just a few little underskin spots on my like top of my chest and top of my back. And I thought that using a kind of anti-spot product in the shower would be a good idea. So yeah, I thought that was a really good shout and I used it just now and it's a really, really nice consistency. You shouldn't really exfoliate just before fake tanning, but whatever. Um, I did pop a few tanning drops on my face already and I'm going to apply a new lovely moisturiser here from Darfan. So this vlog is a little bit higgledy-piggledy because I was actually in London yesterday but I'm going to insert that footage as though it's <laughs> tomorrow so it's going to be Thursday <laughs> then Wednesday just because I wanted to film more today and I didn't feel like I captured that much yesterday. So I had a lovely lunch with Darfan yesterday, which you'll see a bit later. And they were actually launching this, which is the Eclat Sublime Micro Serum Dual Rejuvenating, <laughs> Dual Rejuvenating Micro Serum. I haven't actually used Darfan in quite some time, but I've always been a huge fan of their oils. I used their Eight Flower Golden Nectar Oil for years and years and years. I personally love an oil on my skin. I think it's so pampering. It's just gorgeous for relaxing the skin in the evening. This is their new serum. It's got little little bubbles within there that you can see, micro-encapsulated, super lightweight oil, so you can use it in the daytime. But I wouldn't recommend putting an oil on your skin if you've just popped on any kind of fake tan. That's not a good combination. So I'll probably use that one for the first time tomorrow. But Hydra Skin Light, I think this is one of Darfan's best sellers. It's really gorgeous, lightweight, almost like a gel consistency moisturizer, but it's so hydrating. It's a really fantastic one for summer. Um, and my skin does feel a little bit like tight at the moment. I don't know if it's because I used quite a strong cleanser in the shower. I would normally take it further down my neck, but I'm probably going to apply fake tan right up to my neck today. Um, I would show you a before and after, but I think I'm just going to get butt naked and <laughs> apply my tan. So yeah, this is one that I'm going to use. I mean, you can see the colour of my limbs <laughs> at the moment, and then I will show you probably just before I go to bed how I look once this has developed. Okay, my darlings, 20 minutes later, I have covered myself in fake tan. I think you can see <laughs> a little bit of tan on the old limbs. Um, right, I'm gonna sort my hair out in a second, but first I'm going to do makeup. And again, this is really weird considering the order that you're seeing the vlogs, but yesterday as well in the afternoon, I went to a lovely tea with Laura Mercier. They've launched the Real Flawless Weightless Perfecting Foundation. Now let me read you this. A long wearing foundation that blurs the line between makeup and skin to reveal a healthier looking complexion with skin loving formula, providing perfect medium buildable coverage. So weightless you'll forget you're wearing anything at all. It says to apply to clean skin with the Laura's Real Flawless 
foundation brush, one pump as minimal product is needed. Okay, let's give it a go. Oh my gosh, this packaging is stunning. Wow, look at this. It's got like um, a little rose gold band around the lid. A frosted bottle. That is beautiful. Got a little JF on there. Okay, one pump. Oh, that's tiny. <laughs> that's not going to go very far. So we watched the makeup artists um, applying this on beautiful models yesterday. One of the models, I don't know her exact age, but she was a more mature lady and honestly, she looked stunning. Um, and it made me think maybe this will be a really nice product for my mum to use on the wedding day. In fact, I need to find out what blush they used on that model as well, because she honestly looked so beautiful. All of them did. Um, okay, this is looking really, really nice. Good colour match. I've got the shade Dusk. 3W1 Dusk. Dust. <laughs> Not dust. Dusk. This is lovely. I can totally see what they mean by a blend between the skincare and makeup. So if I'd have got a full pump out that first time, I would say one pump would be enough for almost like a BB kind of finish. And to be honest, that's what I'll probably do for like an everyday basis. Still very much looks like skin, but you can see it's just beautifully evened out. I'm gonna do one more pump for a little bit more coverage today. I like this brush. It's a nice density. Lovely, very happy with that. Um, it looks more full coverage in the mirror than it does in the camera lens, but what's new there? Need a bit of lip balm. Just going to pop on a tiny bit of concealer under my eyes. And now, I'm not very good at powdering myself, but this is an iconic product, of course, the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder. Um, where is my poof? I thought they always came with a poof. This one didn't come with one, but luckily, I have one in my existing Laura Mercier powder. It is a very big poof. Actually, should I just use my one that's open? Yeah, let's just use the one that's already open. So taking a little bit of powder in the lid, taking the poof, not too much, and then just like rolling it onto the skin in the areas where you don't want to be shiny and set your makeup to the sides of the nose. I always get it there. So this mattifies, but it doesn't completely get rid of the glow of the skin. Amazing. An iconic product for good reason. Okay, I'm just gonna apply some bronzer from Dior. Code eight for my brows. And I'm going to use my Bobbi Brown Blushed Bronze Blusher. This is the one that I'm using most days at the moment. It's a really pretty but natural color. And you can just take the highlight section too. Lovely. Okay, some more newness. <laughs> Again, yesterday, but you'll see it tomorrow. The breakfast that I attended was with Bobby Brown, who have collaborated with wedding dress designer Jenny Packham, and they've created a beautiful collection together, including, this is called the Blush Nudes Eyeshadow Palette. There's also a lip balm, which I think I already put in my handbag. There is a lipstick, and look at the packaging, it's so pretty with the little bridal details. You've got the rings, you've got the bow. Um, I can see a lot of brides getting their makeup on the day done with this collection. This beautiful eyeshadow, which is super shimmery. So how fun would that be to just add a little bit of shimmer to your look for the night time? And then this is the most gorgeous highlight. Let's actually just have a little play with this. It's so pearly. Very nice. I thought that would be stronger actually, but it's a fairly nice, it's a nice, fairly subtle highlight and I'm going to use the new eyeshadow palette, really beautiful pinky brownie shades, aka my favourites, 
let's start with the more taupey mushroomy colour all over the lid. Doing eye makeup is not my forte, but these colours are absolutely stunning. Really nice. Look a lot paler on the camera than I do in real life, but in real life, this looks lovely. So I just used those middle two shades on the crease. Let's bring some more pink back in to the corners. Oh, I love that. Love that a lot. I was complimenting Emily on her <laughs> eyelashes yesterday, and she said she does actually warm up her lash curler with a hairdryer. I remember reading about that in like Bliss magazine when I was little as a hack, and I've never actually bothered to do it, but she looked like she'd had a fresh LVL treatment, so maybe I should give that a go. And I'm just using the Merit Beauty Mascara. I'm sure I just pulled a lot of very attractive faces for you. Okay. Ooh. Wow, on. Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Lip Liner. I'm not gonna wipe off the lip balm, just adding this on top. Sometimes you don't get quite enough colour payoff when you add on top of a balm. So let's use Charlotte Tilbury. No, I don't want Sexy Sienna. Clay de Peau Influential. Mm. A very pretty pink. Okay, I feel like I've got quite a lot of makeup on for a day that I'm planning on spending in the garden, but never mind. So, hair. Right, I already misted my wet hair with the Beauty Pie Super Healthy Hair Blow Dry Spray, um, and I've popped a few pumps of the Beauty Pie Super Healthy Hair Seven Oil Hair Elixir in the bottom, and I have dried my hair to 70% dry, I would say. And now, I'm gonna have a little play with something new this will be a first impression that I've seen people talking about online um, and have been very eager to try it out myself. It is the new GHD duet. I'm going to give you a totally honest first impressions. I'm not being paid by GHD. Um, so this will just be a very, very honest first impression. Not that it wouldn't be honest if I was getting paid by them, but just as an FYI. Right, let's give it a go. I am very intrigued. So it's quite a large device feels very substantial. You've got that little chrome silver bit down here. Inside, can you see there's like two almost, well, two straightener plates and then a funnel or a bit in the middle which hot air comes out. So it kind of finishes off drying your hair and smooths it or straightens it in one go. Now I'm not a huge lover of the poker straight hair look, so I'll be interested to see if I can get much movement from my hair with this. I wonder if the sections at the back might be a little bit too wet. Let's see. Duet style user guide. Quickly transform hair from wet to styled in one tool. Ensure your hair is towel dried. Okay, well mine is more than towel dried because I have used a hair dryer on it. Slide the power upwards, yeah, divide your hair. Hold the product close to the roots for three seconds. Glide down the hair towards the end in a slow and steady pace and repeat until dry. Once the hair is fully dry, use an optimal boost of shine with the shine shot. Right, I'm intrigued. Right, where's the on button? Here. Oh, it's got tape on it. <laughs> on button. Oh, I'm so excited. It's quite heavy. Probably not the one to be using after. Not Probably the driest part of my hair. 
doesn't have any arrows, so I guess you can just use it either way around. <laughs> well, that's completely dry now. Not sure I'm getting any curl. Let's see. Oh, a little bit. Tiny bit, okay. And it's just gonna get wetter as we go around, so I might have to do some repetition on the other bits. My hair doesn't feel that hot, so that's a good sign. spacecraft okay well my hair is incredibly soft and smooth feeling um, it is straight I tried to add a little bit of movement in that first bit but I'm not sure if that just takes a little bit more practice still got a nice shine to it and it doesn't feel singed which I was a little bit just realized I had fake tan straight on my poof cushion, which I don't want. Um, yeah, I was a little bit concerned that having straightener pads going onto damp hair would fry it, but I couldn't see any steam escaping, which is always a sign that you're frying your hair. Um, so that's obviously a good thing. It feels really soft, really, really soft. I wish it had little bristles inside here because I do feel that your hair needs to be smooth and brushed to um, glide it through, if that makes sense. Like, I kind of wish that it would brush your hair as well as straightening it and drying it. I don't think that would have taken too much to put little bristle brushes on either side, but I'm sure there's a reason why they don't have that. My hair is naturally quite straight, so I'd be intrigued to know if it works as well on curly hair with it not having brushes to like smooth the hair out first but yeah first impression it was quicker to dry the hair than i thought look at that shine still very very shiny um okay well i'm just gonna do the rest of my hair and let's relaunch the spacecraft and i didn't even use the shine boost yet how many times I flashed you within that time lapse. So my hair is now completely done. You might have seen a little catastrophe happening <laughs> to my hairbrush. To be fair, this was already cracked, um, but now it's completely broken. So feedback uh, and um, thoughts after my first use of the GHD Duet. Having just done that and running my hands through the top of my hair, I do feel that there's still the tiniest bit of dampness up at the very, very top, um, because this is a ginormous device, so you can't literally get it like right to your root. So I would say you're not gonna get bone dry at the roots with this unless, I guess you're not gonna burn, well, I just wouldn't wanna put it right on my scalp skin. So yeah, not sure that you'll ever get your roots completely dry. You could of course keep it turned on and do some like finishing with it. It's not as heavy as it looks considering how big it is, but it's definitely heavier than your traditional straightener. I wish it had the brush bristles within it for combing the hair as you go through because as you'll have seen, I was trying to like hold, um, I was trying to hold a section of hair with one hand and then use a brush with that hand and then use the GHD duet with that hand. So I was trying to like brush, hold, clamp, 
brush again, which is a little bit fiddly and that would be solved if it did have little bristles in it. So yeah, kind of wish that was a design feature, but maybe they'll do a duet too, I wouldn't be surprised. But I know that all sounds a little bit mixed slash negative, but then I have to say, am I pleased with the result? I have got really smooth, shiny looking, and I didn't even use the shine blast, um, and straight hair, which feels so silky soft. I can't even tell you the last time my hair actually felt this smooth, which I'm really impressed by. It feels very light. It doesn't feel damaged. I didn't feel throughout that. I, I guess this is 180 degrees because that's what GHD normally is. Yeah, it doesn't feel damaged. It's got a bit of shine to it, which is very rare for blonde hair. I've also got a little oil, which you couldn't, could put in the ends of your hair, but I don't even really feel like it needs it. How does it look at the back? Did I miss anywhere? <laughs> don't even know if you can see. So yeah, good first impressions. I think there is a tiny bit of room for improvement. Yeah, a very interesting new launch from GHD. It works. Yeah, I don't even really, don't really know what else to say really, but if you've got any questions about this, this versus other hair devices, then let me know. It does come with this little pouchy pouch, which is handy. Another thing, another tiny little drawback is that it's so big that you really do need to like make space for it on your dressing table. I've got makeup all over here, so it was um, getting in the way a little bit, but yeah, I will let you know how I get along in future use cases because obviously first impressions, you're still getting used to something. Let me know what you guys think to this. Is it something that you would use? Let me know down below. Okay, a few more minutes of beauty chat. What's that in the background? My dressing gown. A few more minutes of beauty chat. Can't stop touching my hair, it feels so soft. And then I'm gonna get outside in the garden because it is blue skies and glorious. I placed a beauty pie order last week and it's just arrived. So I'm gonna very quickly show you what was in this week, month's order. It's mostly uh, top ups of things that I've run out of and practical things. So a very practical beauty pie order. Little reminder, Beauty Pie is a kind of luxury beauty membership. The products that Beauty Pie create, for example, these, these are the vitamin C capsules. They are kind of factory direct prices. Beauty Pie cut out the middleman, they cut out um, the insane markup that most beauty brands put on things and they literally just bring you amazing quality products at amazing prices. So when you go on the website, you'll see I'll pop a screenshot of this page on the screen here. You'll see a regular price and then you'll see a member's price. So when you sign up to the membership, which is very affordable, and I do have a code which is Josie sent me that gets you £10 off your annual membership. When you do have this membership, you have access to the members prices. It's absolutely genius and everyone raves about all the products. They really are fantastic. I use a vitamin C serum every single morning. So I've got myself two of these. One is actually for my mum because she, um, Lilla also loves vitamin C in the morning. It's just so lovely. It's almost become like my pre-coffee morning wake up. To get the glow, I love putting these awesome bronze drops in my morning serum. Sunkissed Glow Self Tan Drops. I pop pretty much, um, actually I'd say a third of a pipette in with my first morning serum, which is nearly always, if not always, Clé de Peau. La Serum and they go really nicely together. A practical item, I got a couple of foot files and foot file refills. How glam orama is that? So you actually have to peel off the back and then it's very, very sticky. And then whoa, place it onto there. It's not glamorous, it's not sexy, but I would like smooth feet. So you get one side that's a little bit rougher than the other. And then when you buff it down and you need a refill, you don't need to buy the metal thing again. Ooh, wow, it's so sticky, you need to be careful to get it in the right place. Then you can just buy the stickers, which is great. I've not done that perfectly, but it's a foot file, it doesn't really matter. So there we go. Brilliant, very, very handy. Um, and just substantial, you know, nice metal handle. They just make things very well, do beauty pie. And again, I got one for my mum. Could also use this for, um, obviously not if you've used it for a foot file, but you could use it for spreading icing on a cake, couldn't you? 
quite handy for that. Speaking of feet, how fun, I ordered three of the Beauty Pie Footopia Super Softening Foot and Heel Cream. Charlie and I both absolutely love this, it's amazing, especially after you've used Foot File with Shea Butter Cactus Enzymes and Microbiome. Didn't know that you could put microbiome in a foot cream, but there we go, I got three of those because they're amazing and we use them up all the time. I ordered a couple of bristle hair brushes. I'm probably gonna put the little one in my gym bag for taking to Dalesford, because I've got hair dryers there, but I never wanna take anything else and then at least I can get a little bit of a swoop in my hair. That's a really nice um, mix of plastic bristles and natural bristles. And hopefully that middle section feels like metal so it should get hot. And then I've got a bigger one which I will leave here to use at home. Um, another request from, oh, these are different. I thought they were two of the same. Both requests from Charlie. Overnight Skin Perfector. This is a gentle retinol triple smoothing infusion. So Charlie likes to apply that at night. I think it's a mask. Oh no. Oh yes. <laughs> it is a mask. So you can put it on over a serum if you want to. Skin Perfector. I think Charlie leaves it on. It's probably not a good idea, but yeah, it's a nice, um, if you bas basically want to resurface your skin, get rid of any dullness, get rid of any dryness, and that's amazing. And then a black clay mask from the Super Pore Detox range. Both amazing, amazing face masks. Again, face masks can just be so expensive, can't they? But the Beautify ones are a very good price. Right, this is really interesting. So the first beauty product that I told you about this morning was the Paula's Choice um, shower gel, which I hope will help with little underskin spots after a workout. Well, <laughs> would you believe it? Beauty Pie have got something exceptionally similar. This is also 2% BHA um, salicylic acid. So again, really good at, it's more like a kind of chemical exfoliation. So instead of a manual exfoliation with little granules, this is more of a chemically one. Really good if you are a fake tan user as well. 3% papaya enzyme plus marshmallow extract. I think this is gonna be amazing. I, I think it must be new, it's called Accidenzyme, <laughs> which is a fun name. And I've got a feeling Charlie's gonna love it as well. So, got two of those. I mean, we obviously share a shower, but <laughs> I think it'll get used up pretty quickly. And then what were the last things? Super Healthy Skin is a favorite range of mine and my mum's. I got her the anti-aging face cream. She absolutely loves that one. And then this is the, oh, this is the hair. Super Healthy Hair. Gosh, normally I remember to get myself a body moisturizer. Need to do another order. Um, luscious Moisture Treatment Mask. Amazing hair mask. It keeps your hair so silky soft. And again, hair masks is another one. Like Kerastase masks, they are so expensive. And this is literally the same if not better. So yes, there we go. That was my beauty pie order. Right, I can't believe it's nearly midday and I haven't been out into the garden yet. Um, so I'm going to pop my boots on and water everything in the greenhouse and then see what gardening chores need to be done today. Okay, my darlings, um, not quite outside just yet, but loads of people this morning um, have sent me a screenshot of Deliciously Ella's Instagram stories because she said that if you put a couple of drops of olive oil into homemade oat milk, it gives you a bit of a froth. So I'm gonna try my milky plant machine again, um, learning the lessons that I learned last time. So I'm gonna do oats, I'm gonna do cashews for creaminess, I'm gonna do salt for taste. And then when I put it in my milk frother, I'm gonna try Ella's trick and put some and put a few drops of olive oil in there. So we'll see, we shall see. But um, yeah, I was impressed with how easy this was to make oat milk last time. But I confess, I did go back <laughs> to Oatly Barista from a taste point of view and a frothiness point of view. But I really do want to get into the habit of not having Oatly Barista. So let's give this another try. We have got fresh oat milk. It's actually quite warm. Fresh oat milk from the Oatly, no, <laughs> not Oatly, Milky Plant Machine. 
Oh, yummy. Okay, right. So I'm going to pour this in up to the minimum line, which is what I would normally do quantity wise for Oatly Barista. Now, deliciously, Ella, let's try your trick. I'm going to film this for Instagram stories as well because so many people tagged me in deliciously Ella's stories. Guys, if this actually works, I will be so thrilled. So um, this is my oat milk that I've just made in my machine and I've got it in my Smeg frother, which I always use. Okay, a couple of drops. Ooh, that's probably more than a couple of drops, isn't it? Please work. Because I adore the oat milk that I can make at home with my milky plant, but it does not froth up, even though I've got um, cashews. Oh, it doesn't normally make that noise, you know. Um, I do mostly oats, but also a couple of cashews and a little pinch of salt for flavor and cashews make it creamy. Um, but yeah, it, just, it doesn't froth. It's lovely, but it does not froth. So let's see how this tastes. I just made a delightful Okay, <laughs> I can see it, and it's not as frothy as Oatly Barista. Guys, no, this has not worked. This has not worked. Oh, this is disappointing. Sorry, deliciously, Ella, but you've let me down. Nada. Okay, maybe a few more bubbles than when I did it without the olive oil. This is a very rich olive oil, um, so I wonder if you need like a, a supermarket one. <laughs> Look at me, the olive oil snob. Um, okay, it's just going to be a normal milky coffee. Maybe like 1% more froth than before, but it's definitely not a frothy coffee. But anyway, there we go. If you are trying to cut out um, the ingredients that are in the likes of Oatly, uh, because they are full of emulsifiers, which is not good for you. I still have a frothy coffee in the morning with my Oatly Barista, but this is my... Oatly, my oat milk coffee, which is much better than me. Okay, it's 2 p.m. and I've finally made it into the gla glass house, greenhouse. <clears throat> Technically a glass house, actually. Anyway, so what I'm going to do now is um, propagate some of this basil that Charlie bought from the supermarket yesterday. Where did he get it from? Probably uh, Waitrose or Dalesford or something. Can't really tell. But I'm actually going to film this for a YouTube short. So that will probably already be up. So I'll leave that linked. Oops. I'll leave that linked either up on the screen or down below. Uh, basically... If you buy one of these and propagate it well, you can essentially never have to buy basil ever again, which is fantastic. So I'm going to give that a go, and then I'm going to give everything in here a really good water. Everything is doing well. We've got um, my little seedlings over here. Oh, look, my courgettes. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. Um, need to water my hydrangea. Actually, I just need to water everything in here, to be honest. It gets so warm and toasty. Wowza. Nasturtiums are getting quite crazy. The Asian greens are ready to go out. Yeah, everything is looking great. I'm going to just leave you rolling for a little behind the scenes of this YouTube short in at the making. Right, first of all, I need to find some good lighting. Well, unfortunately, my battery died while I was doing the um, basil propagating, so you'll just have to check out the short. But as you'll have just seen, I've planted up a few more of my squash seeds, a mixture of pumpkin squash, marrow, and um, courgette. So I used one of the new, slightly bigger seed trays that I got from Burford last week. This is the selection that I have just planted. I'm hoping that if all of these germinate, I will be able to give a few to um, Scarlett, who's moving house this weekend, and also Charlie's cousin Emma and her fiancé Anthony. I saw on Anthony's 
Instagram that they have just got an allotment opposite their house so it will be perfect to give them a few of these as well because I have done rather a lot of seedlings but while the weather's so lovely I think I'm just going to give everything a quick water in here and then I'm going to head out and do some outside bits it's going to be rainy over the next couple of days as well so anything that I do outside will get nicely watered and rained in which is perfect timing update for you so I've just planted my sweet peas in the um, cut flower beds underneath these little triangles so hopefully they'll grow all the way up and just like I did last time I've used these little branches not so sure how well you'll be able to see them but the branches that came in my flowered uh, flower bouquet very useful for just encouraging the sweet peas to find that first rung on the support while they are nice and um, young <laughs> fresh plants and not the strongest when they've just been planted and then that last little time lapse that you saw these are alisum alisum white apparently very popular for the edges of pathways so hopefully they'll grow nice and big and strong and start trailing over this little pathway here which should look rather lovely my goodness i'm actually just out in a t-shirt now this is so glorious. It feels like a beautiful, warm spring afternoon. Um, I'm sure, yeah, some of my dahlias that I left in the ground over winter are starting to show a few signs of life. The peonies are coming up. They are going to look absolutely gorgeous. What else? Uh, gosh, those peonies are doing very well. And then we've got that giant cardoon in the corner, which is going to become ginormous. I think the next thing I'm going to do is plant a few seeds. I'm gonna do, oh no, something's falling onto my hand, oh no. I'm gonna do some chard, that's this one that's falling into my hand. Um, some tatsoi and some radicchio, and I'm going to direct plant these into the beds. completely dazzled by the sunshine in the greenhouse. Gosh, that was a lovely and very productive hour or so seed planting. I think, tragically, after today, it is going to be um, raining <laughs> for the next few days. So the seeds will get nicely watered in. Um, I planted out a few little seedlings. Where are the rest of them? I very carefully prized out a few of these spinach seedlings and then used my little dibber to dip them into the raised beds outside so hopefully we'll have a nice early harvest of spinach um oh my japanese cucumber is starting to germinate as well can you see here <laughs> very exciting indeed so it's got a little bit I'm not going to say chilly because it's definitely not chilly, but it's got a bit breezy outside. So I'm just going to do the bits that I want to do in the greenhouse, um, which is I need to 
do my second batch of runner beans in the loo roll tubes and then I've got quite a lot of potting I need to do, the bits that I got from Burford last week. These Campanula are just looking so stunning um, and I think I'd like to bring these into the house to enjoy their blooms. So I'm going to pop those up but first of all let's get started with my lovely beans. update. So I've done a bit of seed planting and now I've got a pot here that I'm going to put my campanula in. I want to have some nice drainage at the bottom so I've got a broken pot which I'm going to smash up a little bit more and that will just help to ensure that the soil doesn't get all um, blocked and stodgy down at the bottom. seed sowing that I've just done. Um, I just reused all of the containers after I potted the things on because anytime I have a spare container I find a use for it. So I've got a new batch of peas here. I know, don't think you can ever have quite enough peas. Um, a defender courgette, some climbing beans and runner beans. I feel like now that George and Petra have got a garden, Scarlett's got an amazing amount of outside space, and now that I know that Emma and Anthony have got an allotment, that to me is just an excuse to grow, grow, grow. <laughs> so there will be lots of little seedlings that I'll be giving away to friends and family once the frosts have passed, and I'll take great pleasure in um, checking in on them and making sure that they're keeping their seedlings alive. And then over here, I've just uh, scavenged for a couple more terracotta pots. I'm going to put this lovely lanai that I got from Dalesford in this one. Oh, I don't even know if that'll be big enough actually. I think I need to find something a bit bigger for this Gusta mini red tomato plant which I got from Burford. No, I think I need something bigger. In which case, um, no, I think the original needs to go and get planted outside. I'll do that in a second. So what can I put in that Dalesford pot? Hmm. <laughs> Um, maybe I will cut back this mint. This is a mint that we used to have in the kitchen, uh, but it got a little bit leggy. So maybe I'll cut that all back and plant this into the Dalesford pot. And then when it grows back nicely, we can put it back into the kitchen. Oh, Dickie! Hello, my sweet bunny. I've got a visitor. I've got a visitor and he's a fluffy visitor. Fluffy visitors are the greatest ones. So we've just put these supports on our hydrangeas which will hopefully stop them from flopping over quite as much when they get the big billowy blooms on them in a few months time. Uh, but I've just brought out a bucket of water and some scissors. I'm going to pick some of these beautiful tulips. They could look absolutely gorgeous in the house and I think unfortunately it's going to be raining and miserable for the next few days so at least by, so at least by bringing them inside I'll get to enjoy them for a little bit longer. I feel like it's suddenly got so chilly. We're back in the house, we are cooking dinner together. We're doing a nice kind of spicy, coconutty chicken curry, which should be lovely. Oof, it's much colder on this side of the house because it's so exposed. Um, and obviously we turned the heating off a couple of weeks ago, maybe a little bit prematurely. But there we go. Don't mind being a bit chilly in the evening after a gorgeous day. I had to take off my <laughs> nail varnish again because um, it just went completely awful from all the gardening. But I am so impressed. Probably doesn't look impressive <laughs> here, but I am actually really impressed with how well this Laura Mercier foundation lasted today. I feel like my skin still looks really nice and glowy a little bit a little bit patchy but i have literally been <laughs> in the garden all day 
So I am going to now take off my makeup and then um, we're going to have a lovely curry for dinner. I need to have a quick shower before bed. Maybe I'll have a bath actually because my muscles are quite achy. But I'm going to bid you good night now um, and watch <laughs> something while I'm taking off my makeup. So the next clips that you'll see will be yesterday's footage from my day in London. So I hope you enjoy it and good night. <laughs> Good morning, my darlings. It is very early. <laughs> it's 6.52 in the morning. I've got a train in 10 minutes. Um, early breakfast meeting slash event in London today. I still feel half asleep. I actually just had a very embarrassing moment. I tried reversing into two different parking spaces epically failed on both of them and then upon submitting to not being able to do the second one I realized that someone had been watching me the whole time so that's funny and embarrassing um but yes a really nice day of events in London today quite a few kind of bridal themed things I slept with my hair in heatless curls last night and it's gone totally crazy but weirdly I think my hair is actually still damp so I've not properly brushed it out yet um i will do that <laughs> on the train but anyway i just wanted to check in and say hello and um i'm going to dash and get my tickets and my car park sorted and i will see you in london dashing between breakfast meetings and press days so the clips you'll have just seen were at the fielding room in the nomad hotel which is so beautiful i'd actually never been in there before really really lovely to celebrate a new collaboration between bobby brown and jenny packham jenny packham being a beautiful british wedding dress designer and they've actually done a full-on um makeup collection together which i'm very much looking forward to trying out while we were <laughs> getting fun around the corner while we were having breakfast and I was sat next to the lovely Alice Living. We were discussing everything from wedding dresses to aura rings. She's totally convinced me to get an aura ring. Um, and we were watching a beautiful model wearing a gorgeous Jenny Packham gown as she had her makeup done by Jess from the Bobby Brown, Bobby Brown makeup team. Got this in my goodie bag. I've just popped on one of the lovely lip balms and there's some really beautiful new pieces in the collection. It's actually... Um, it's all pieces of all pieces which would be perfect for a glowing and beautiful wedding day makeup look. Next I'm heading to Bond Street. I'm gonna go and pop in to the David Morris Press Day. They have some beautiful bridal pieces. I haven't been to a press day in a very long time, but I thought seeing as I'm in town today and it's bridal themed, I would pop in. Um, and then I am going to see L'Atelier Aesthetics for a little bit of a glow boost. Now is the perfect time as we're in the wedding countdown to do a few facial tweakments. So I'll bring you along with me for that. I'll show you a few very subtle things that I have done for pre-wedding skin and um, yeah, tweakments. And then I'm heading for a tea with Laura Mercier and I'm gonna see all the girls there. So a really lovely day in town. Next stop on Bond Street, David Morris. Let's go and check it out. I've made it to Harley Street, heading in to 101 to see my lovely friends at L'Atelier, Duncan and Emma. Bacher 
Canalia. I am reliably informed that's how you pronounce it for a beautiful lunch with Darfan and look at the florals in here. Um, same owners as Annabelle's apparently this place. Downstairs is rather spectacular and this is giving me some major inspo for our wedding table. I have long been a lover of the Darfan oils so I'm excited to see what their new launches are but it just looks sensational in here. My goodness. This is the main restaurant. Look at this. So cool. And we're in this lovely little private room. What a setup. So I think we'll be discovering a new oil. Look at this. And how gorgeous. After a busy day of meetings, our day ended in Soho House with M, Emily and Freddie and now I have persuaded the girls to come to my favourite place, Honest Burger! <laughs> Okay, we've got the burger and my darling has gone healthy. I'm, try I'm really trying to run a health kit because my diet is chocolate. So is mine. But I am having this these. You're such anything. a good girl. I wish I had your self control. No, no, I am not usually a good girl. I did also just have two slices of cake. We did just have a lot of cake. We did just have a lot of cake. I'm so excited for this. My mouth is watering. 